What's going on guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new 15-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display, which has finally been updated along with the rest of the MacBooks that already saw their updates. Now the update here does not include new Broadwell processors, unlike the other MacBooks, and that's because there isn't a quad-core Broadwell. So we're still on the same chips, but we have four major new features here. So we have faster storage, it's now up to two gigs per second, of course we'll test that out in this video. We have a new discrete graphics processor in the upgraded model, which is the version I have here. So that is the the new AMD Radeon R9 M370X with two gigs of GDDR5 memory. We also get improved battery life, so we're now up from eight hours to nine hours. And lastly, perhaps the biggest new feature here is the new Force Touch trackpad, which we'll go over in this video. Now there are two off-the-shelf configurations. The stock configuration starts off at $19.99. They get you a 2.2 gigahertz quad-core i7, 256 gigs of storage, and 16 gigs of RAM. The next step up is $24.99. That's the version I have here. That gets you a 2.5 gigahertz Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and dedicated graphics, as I mentioned before, instead of the Intel Iris Pro graphics. Now, in terms of the unboxing experience, it's pretty familiar here. We have our specs on the back and this nice, simple white box that highlights the thinness of the MacBook Pro. So removing the plastic surrounding the box, we can lift up the lid and first thing we'll see is that bright white backlit Apple logo, which is still here, of course, hasn't been lost like we saw with the MacBook. So lifting up the computer with that little tab, it is fairly heavy, four and a half pounds, the heaviest MacBook by far. It's about a pound heavier than the 13 inch. So let's go ahead and peel off that wrapper, makes a really nice sound and slide it out. Now, if we lift up the lid, we'll find a piece of paper that protects the glass from the keyboard during shipping. So before we boot this up and take a close look, let's get to the accessories. First thing we see here is our literature packet, designed by Apple in California. Inside, we'll find a quick start guide highlighting some of the OS X Yosemite features. We also have our warranty and safety guide, along with a set of Apple stickers. We also get a microfiber cleaning cloth for cleaning the glass display, and it is Apple branded. We also have our power brick and extension cable, and this is a 85 watt power brick. That's the largest of any of the power bricks available. Uh, this charges that 99.5 watt hour lithium polymer battery inside the MacBook and uses that familiar MagSafe 2 connector, which is reversible. The power brick itself is also pretty familiar here. You have a set of removable prongs, so you can use an extension cable, which they have included here, or you can use an international wall adapter while you're traveling. You can also fold out these clamps for winding up the cable for cable management so you can travel neatly. In terms of the design, it looks identical to the previous generation. All the updates are internal. Of course, we do have a new Force Touch trackpad, which also looks the same. Returning once again is that beautiful high-resolution 2880 by 1800 Retina display, good for 220 pixels per inch. So that's the largest resolution that Apple has on any of its laptops right now. So that compares to the 13-inch, which is at 2560 by 1600. We still have that nice anti-reflective coating, so it's able to mitigate glare, doesn't completely eliminate it. But it's a really sharp, vivid, bright display with great off-axis viewing, and it's ideal for people who are doing photo editing or video editing. Now, once again, we have an edge-to-edge -edge glass panel, which is surrounded by a rubber gasket that seals up the computer and prevents the glass from touching the body when it's closed. At the top of the bezel, you'll find the same FaceTime HD camera, good for 720p resolution, with an LED indicator and an ambient light sensor for adapting the brightness of the display and the backlit keyboard. Speaking of the keyboard, it's basically carried over. No changes here. We still have that nice backlighting, which is adjustable manually or by automatic. Uh, you can see in the top row, we have all of our function keys, which include screen brightness, expose and launcher, as well as keyboard brightness, our media controls, volume controls, and our power button. Flanked on either side of the keyboard are our front-facing stereo speakers, and they sound great. And I will compare this to other MacBooks later in this video. Also hidden within those speaker grills are dual microphones. Of course, we also have our new Force Touch trackpad, which isn't too large. It actually looks kind of small on the size of the 15-inch MacBook Pro, but again, it's a nice glass surface, feels great to use, and is very accurate and sensitive. On the left side, we have all of our familiar I.O. We have our MagSafe 2 connector for charging, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, a USB 3.0 port, and a headphone jack, which also acts as an input for a microphone. On the right side, we'll find our second USB 3.0 port, an HDMI output, and an SDXC card slot. On the front, you'll find a notch for picking up the display of the laptop and the hinge is perfectly weighted so it doesn't lift up the entire computer when you lift up the display. On the bottom of the MacBook, you'll find a single panel held on with pentalobular screws, very familiar to other MacBooks. This is not meant to be user upgradable. You can't upgrade the RAM yourself because everything is basically soldered or glued together. We have our MacBook Pro branding back here because it can't fit on the thin bezel surrounding the display. Also on either side here are these ventilation grills, which also act as structural members to stiffen the chassis. 
Speaking of ventilation, most of it is hidden behind the hinge here. And as you can see, if you look closely, the ventilation is actually drilled through the metal chassis. It looks very neat, even though you don't really see it. And of course, the ventilation works whether the lid is closed or not. Now, the biggest new feature for the new MacBook Pro is the new Force Touch trackpad, which looks like the old one. It has a nice glass surface with multi-touch gestures. The big difference here is internally. So instead of a physical clicking mechanism, instead we have this Taptic engine, which replicates the physical click. It also has four force sensors, so it can actually determine how much force you're applying to the trackpad. So this means that you get this new gesture in OS X called Force Clicking. Now, using this trackpad is very similar to the old one. That Taptic engine actually gives you the sensation that you're actually clicking on the trackpad and it's nearly indistinguishable. It's actually really interesting because it feels like the trackpad is moving, but it's just the haptic or taptic engine that's giving you this haptic feedback. It's really nice. Now, the great thing about this trackpad is that you have this nice even clicking across the entire trackpad. It's not stiffer toward the top like it is on the uh, traditional trackpad. Now, force clicking happens when you press harder on the trackpad. So you get the first click and then you'll get a secondary click when you force click. Now, force clicking can be used in a number of ways. One of them is to bring up quick look. So for example, if you have a video thumbnail, just force click on it and you get a quick look of the video. You can also look up a word in a web browser or something like that by force clicking on the word, which is very handy. Now, perhaps the most interesting application for force clicking is within media playback. So if you force click on one of the media controllers, you can actually speed up your media scrubbing by pressing and holding deeper on the trackpad. Now, when you're doing this and you press harder on the trackpad, you actually get a sensation that you're moving through the detents of the fast forwarding speeds. And when you lift up the finger or reduce pressure, you get the same in reverse, which is really interesting. It's very effective. Now, there are many other ways of using force click, and I'm sure many more will be added soon. But one of my favorites right now is previewing web pages uh, on the website. So for example, if you have a web page full of links, instead of opening individual tabs, you can actually force click one of those links to get a preview of that page before opening it, which I think is very useful. Now, if you look really closely at the trackpad, you can see there is a slight amount of movement, and that's because the four sensors need some movement to detect pressure. Now, force clicking is a software feature, so if whatever you're doing doesn't support it, you won't get that sensation of the secondary click. Now, you still get a clicking sound, but it's a little different than the traditional trackpad, so let's go ahead and take a listen to the difference. Now, in terms of the CPU performance, again, this is identical to the previous generation. So we're seeing identical Geekbench scores. So we get a single core score of 3,700 and a multi-core score of 14,159, which is pretty impressive. Now, in terms of graphics, we have an all new GPU to test out. We have an AMD R9 versus the NVIDIA 750M. So the new R9 scored 63 frames per second in the OpenGL test and 571 on the CPU test. Now that's a very minor gain from the previous generation, which saw 59 frames per second and 563 CBs. So ultimately, we won't see huge gains in the CPU or the GPU, but we do see big gains in the disk speed test. So with the write speed on the new MacBook Pro is 1500 megs per second, and the read speed is a stunning 1900, almost two gigs per second. That more than doubles the performance of the previous generation, which had a write speed of 700 and a read speed of around 800. Next up, let's take a listen to those front-facing stereo speakers and compare them to the other MacBooks. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Board, with a quick look at Apple's new iPhone Lightning Dock, which just launched today for $39. You can pick it up right now from the Apple website or in the Apple Store. So, so this is the first time we're seeing an iPhone dock compatible with the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Now previously, Apple has launched specific docks for each phone that were form-fit to those phones, but instead this time Apple has launched a universal dock that's meant to work with basically any iPhone with a Lightning connector. So the iPhone 5 and newer and the iPod Touch fifth generation. Now, if audio quality is very important to you, you definitely want to go with the MacBook Pro. I think it sounds the best, although I think the MacBook, the small, thin MacBook is actually pretty close, but both of them sound much better than the tinny and more muffled sound of the MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, in the end, the 15-inch MacBook Pro is by far Apple's most powerful laptop. It's the only MacBook that offers quad-core processors. It's the only MacBook that offers discrete graphics. It's also the largest display with the highest resolution. So this is really geared toward higher-end users who need graphics performance, who need to do photo editing or video editing on the go. So this is definitely geared toward those users. But ultimately, if you just want a large display laptop with 
solid capabilities that will last you for a long time, then I think the base configuration at $19.99 is a solid option to consider. So in the end, you're left with a very capable computer with a beautiful display, great build quality with precision manufacturing, and a great design that will last for a long time. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.